Hey, what's up guys? It's Brandon Bailey and I wanted to make another uh, video before I call it a night. Uh, something that's kind of been going around my brain a little bit um, while I've had conversations with different marketers in different types of industries uh, and friends and all that kind of stuff. Um, this isn't scripted. It's not really thought out too well. Uh, so hopefully it kind of makes sense. <laughs> but uh, one thing I kind of wanted to go over is um, kind of comparing, you know, your traditional job, your nine to five, um, multi-level marketing or network marketing, and that would include also like direct sales, um, and then your high ups and your rev shares. Uh, so <clears throat> what I kind of wanted to do is um, make make some comparisons between these, and then I would love some feedback if people disagree. Um, have maybe a, a different outlook and whatnot, uh, feel free to leave a, a, a comment um, or even a video response. That'd be fun. Um, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and we're pretty much just going to thumbs up and thumbs down um, some categories here and maybe talk about them a little bit. So uh, let's talk about sustainability. <clears throat> this goes from a launch or you know a company opening um, to them either staying around indefinitely um, or you know at least in our lifetime. Um, to programs and companies that maybe last a week or a month or a couple of months, a couple of years. <clears throat> um, one thing I want to point out, because when you first look at these three options here, um, right away people are, are probably going to say a, a traditional nine to five is the best for sustainability, right? You get a regular job, <clears throat> Monday through Friday, nine to five, you know, whatever, whatever it is, and that's going to be more safe than these other two options. Uh, I would disagree. Uh, I don't know if people realize this, but 96%, I think, is the last time I saw it. it could, it could have changed. Maybe, maybe it's down to 93. Maybe it's 90%. Um, but 90 to 96% of all traditional businesses, right, businesses that don't start online, fail within the first four to 10 years. So it might feel secure, you might feel safe getting that, that nine to five job, but in all actuality, um, chances are it could fail, you know, unless you're, you know, you get in with like a Walmart or, you know, a Comcast and even those companies, you know, none of them are, are safe. I mean, you could still get fired. <clears throat> um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a nine to, the 9 to 5 a thumbs down because you don't have sustainability. Um, <clears throat> the reason people's mind might think a 9 to 5 is safer than network marketing um, or high ups and rev shares is because you're probably going to see a lot more multi-level marketing companies spawn up, right? You might get 5 or 10 or even more a day. Uh, I don't know if somebody wants to leave a comment and tell me, I don't know what the success rate is for network marketing companies, but um, even if it's around the same 96% of them failing, people's minds are going to feel like network marketing isn't as safe as a regular job because there's probably 10 times as many network marketing companies starting online than there are you know, businesses in your local neighborhood, for example. Um, <clears throat> But if the percentages are close, uh, you know, 96% of traditional businesses go under. If 96% of network marketing companies go under, there might be way more of them to go under. But percentage-wise, they're probably pretty close. <clears throat> um, so I don't think network marketing is very, you know, reliable either. Um, in all honesty, I would say high ups and rev shares share the same fate. Um, I would say there's probably even more high ups and rev shares popping up, maybe more high ups than rev shares, but they're, they're pretty close to the same thing. Um, there's probably more, I mean, twi I mean, you could probably find 20 of these programs coming up every single day. And if 96% of those fail, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of them failing. But again, when you compare them to a regular job or, or other industry companies, I mean, is it really that different? Um, a lot of criticism for high ups and rev shares is, well, they could just close down at any time and take your money and run away. Yeah, they could. So could a nine to five. So could a multi-level marketing company. I mean, you can have, you know, Amway 
uh, has, you know, or Herbalife or Melaleuca, these companies have been around 20, 30, 40 years. Do you really think that they're immune to just going under? I mean, there's been huge, you know, multi-level marketing companies that, you know, have a good five, 10 year run and then they just get shut down. <clears throat> um, but I won't, I, I won't try to act like it's equal across the board. Obviously, when you have more companies going under, even if it's the same percentage, right? If you just have more companies going under, people might get a bad taste in their mouth. Um, you know, so anyway, I, I don't want to go on too long, but yeah, I'm just going to be honest. I, I would say that high ups and rev shares don't have sustainability. I mean, I think the lesson to learn here is that nothing in life is guaranteed. Right, you need to make the best choices for you as an individual. Um, and I personally <clears throat> like the high ups and the rev shares um, over a nine to five or a multi level marketing uh, company. Uh, and I'll go over those reasons why in another video. But anyway, <clears throat> getting back to this, um, pays your worth. <clears throat> now, some people can argue that if you get the right job, right? I mean, if you're uh, a graphics design major uh, and you get a job for Pixar you're, you're probably getting paid what you're worth but the vast majority of people uh, are not experiencing that most people are underpaid most people as you know especially here in the United States work a full-time job or even two full-time jobs right working 60 70 hours a week and they have to go on welfare programs or go down to their local church or whatever program that's providing extra food. I mean, we're talking about <clears throat> couples or single parents here working more than the full-time job equivalent and still not able to feed their family. So <clears throat> uh, I think it's a no-brainer that a nine to five is most likely not going to pay you what you're worth. Um, now, when it comes to <clears throat> MLM and, and network marketing and the rev shares and the high ups, um, I think it depends who you ask, right? I mean, if you're if you're asking uh, Tony Robbins or <clears throat> you know, um, this might not be the best example because he does he does self help stuff. But you know, if you're if you're talking to the top income earners in these companies, people making ten, fifty grand a month, hundred thousand dollars a month, yeah, they're going to tell you they're being they're being paid what they're worth, but at what expense, <clears throat> right? Um, I'm a firm believer. A lot of people disagree with me. <clears throat> In network marketing, especially, they tell you this whole duplication story, right? I make ten thousand dollars a month. Duplicate what I do, and you too will make ten thousand dollars a month. I personally, I don't buy it. I don't think people can be duplicated. I think everybody's different. Everybody has their own skill set. Um, I think delegation <clears throat> is a better word. Uh, if someone joins with me, I'm not going to tell them, "Oh, just watch my YouTube videos." and watch what I do on social media and duplicate me. I'm gonna spend time with that person and I'm going to find their strengths and their weaknesses and I'll delegate them tasks that will help them succeed. <clears throat> um, so, you know, for network marketing, I'm also going to say <clears throat> that you're not getting paid what you're worth. Um, I mean, there's people, I know for myself, when I first started out, and I'm someone who made money, but even when I first started out, I was working 14, 15, 16 hour days. In retrospect, sure, I was making a couple thousand dollars a month. I should have been making more. I mean, I feel like 16 hours a day is definitely worth more than a couple thousand dollars a month. So <clears throat> um, I think this is going to be the first area in which it's going to differ from the rest. I think when, you go, when it comes to high ups and rev shares, you, you're, you're being paid your worth. Um, because you you pretty much know what you're going to be paid, um, not including commissions, right? I mean, <clears throat> when you go into a rev share or a high up and you know that that program tells you you're going to be paid three percent of your investment or your um, you know your ad pack value <clears throat> every day, well, then you know what that amount's going to be. So I think it'd be hard to argue that when it comes to high ups and rev shares, you're not being paid your worth because you know exactly what to expect. <clears throat> Pyramid driven. <clears throat> so what I mean by this is, is, is this, I'm sure you've seen this before. Um, when I mean pyramid driven, I mean 
the, the person getting in on day number one, the very first person, is he going to have an advantage over other people? Um, now, obviously, it's a little different for a nine to five in this illustration. You know, it's, it's not like a CEO is a CEO because he got in on the first day. No, I mean, he, you know, he worked hard and some people worked hard, some didn't. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, they, they, they obtain that position. And then you start working down to your presidents and your vice presidents and middle management employees. And in most cases, this is a pyramid. When people talk about a pyramid scheme and they're, you know, most of the time it's, they're talking about an online company. No, I mean, I feel like a nine to five is a pyramid scheme. The people working the absolute hardest, right? The people putting in the most hours, <clears throat> um, usually the, the people doing the labor uh, are the employees at the very bottom and them working incredibly, like, really really hard they're making the people above them more money <clears throat> so uh yeah <clears throat> let's go ahead and give a thumbs down to a nine to five because i mean i just <clears throat> i think it's terrible uh mlm <clears throat> and network marketing uh i haven't seen a program yet that doesn't benefit the people getting in the earliest i'm sorry i mean I'm, that doesn't mean that it's a scheme. It doesn't mean that it's illegal. That's when I hear scheme, I think illegal, a pyramid scheme, an illegal pyramid. <clears throat> the most successful, or I would say all successful network marketing companies, um, they are a pyramid structure. They're legal. They're not schemes. Um, but <clears throat> there's very few companies out there where if you joined on day one or ten years later that you're not going to have an advantage from joining on day one. So again, um, where I think we're going to get another difference here is with high ups. Um, sure, there are going to be, I guess, some high ups uh, where, or rev shares where um, the advantage of promoting early, you know, goes to the people that, that started to do it the first, you know, the earliest because they're getting this new program right <clears throat> a brand new program exposed to people before anybody else so that's definitely an advantage um, but I wouldn't say that commissions drive rev shares or or even high ups right I mean it's when the company says we're gonna give you five percent a day <clears throat> excuse me um, that that's separate from the commission aspect that's not it's not a pyramid right if I come in on January 1st 2016 and I put in $500 into a high up um, somebody that joins January 1st 2025 into the same high up assuming it's still around or a similar high up and puts in $500 we're equal I mean we have the same earning potential so uh, I'll have to give another thumbs up to the high ups and the rev shares. Uh, <clears throat> and then sponsoring required. So, I mean, basically what I mean by this is uh, do you have to bring other people in personally to have success? Um, I think this one's kind of a no-brainer. It's, pre it's pretty easy. I mean, when you have a nine to five, unless you are a recruiter of some sort or 100% commission-based <clears throat> in your job, you don't have to sponsor anybody. So, I mean, that's, that's a plus to a nine to five. If you don't like sponsoring people, a nine to five is good for you, I guess. <laughs> um, with MLM and network marketing, I'm sure people can argue this. I, I would love to hear your side of things uh, or even get, have examples given. Uh, please don't give like referral links and stuff, but if you want to give the names of companies and I'll go ahead and research them. Um, network marketing and MLM is based 100% on its members bringing in other members. Now whether those members are buying products directly or some kind of subscription base, that's going to differ from company to company. <clears throat> um, but you 100% need to bring in new members uh, into a network marketing company. <clears throat> um, so I need to finish up this video. So basically when it comes down to high ups and rev shares, you personally <clears throat> do not have to do this. In most cases, the high up or the rev share, they do their own advertising. They get the bulk of the people uh, to begin with, and then those people start referring people. It does help, obviously, if you're bringing people in, 
but it's not mandatory. So that's my video. I hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment, share, like, uh, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.